Hey guys, so here we are tonight at the uh, Delta Rockwell 11 inch lathe. Just want to give you a little update on what's going on with it. Um, I have two of these. I intend to keep one, I intend to keep this one. Uh, as you can see, everything's in pretty fantastic shape. Original condition, the paint's all original. A um, couple issues I've had with it. Uh, for beginners, the whole lathe was kind of crudded up. Um, I'm definitely having an issue with the headstock, shifting the gears. I've had all this apart. Well, actually, I didn't take the headstock off the lathe, so I'm lying. But I've taken the shifter cover off. I've kind of looked in there, adjusted everything. I fixed one of the. Um, the Powell's in there was uh, wasn't in position right, having a, a tremendous trouble. Uh, now it, it kind of pulls out and in before it wouldn't even do that before. But I'm having trouble changing a lever. I'm just about using every ounce of force I have to move that lever. Um, I've seen a lot of a lot of these levers broken, so I uh, I'm, I'm going to eventually have to take the headstock off because I can't get the spindle into back ears. I, you know, I can force it into back ears, but um, I'm afraid to turn it on in back ears because I don't really know what's going to happen. It just feels like everything's locked up in there. Um, other than that, I've been going over the lathe. Uh, I picked up another lathe, just like a, a longer bed version. And the other lathe actually had a taper attachment. This is part of that taper attachment. And I took the taper attachment off the other lathe. But what I come to find um, is that this just slides in and out. So I really don't want to put the taper attachment on at this point. Um, so I have to actually make one of these. This uh, kind of slides in here in this place and there is a hex key or grub screw that kind of locks into this and it keeps this um, keeps this from sliding in and out thus it you know it holds the uh, carriage or not the carriage but the uh, cross feed in, in place uh, as I took this apart I come to, came to find that someone had packed this whole recess with um, looked like no locks it was a, a silver type substance kind of gritty little graphite -y. Uh, it was in there bad and I really noticed that the uh, the cross feed screw was looking quite worn down so fortunately I had another cross feed screw and I had a, a, a brand new cross feed nut and you can kind of see here there is zero play in this cross slide. So that's pretty fantastic. Uh, this was all caked up. I could barely even turn this. But I took it all apart. I cleaned it all up. I got as much of that crap out of there that I could. And eventually, you know, at some point I would kind of probably like to restore this lathe. So I'll, I'll be at it again taking this apart. But for the most part, it's nice and clean. The ways are in excellent condition. They're hardened. Um, I just really took a little bit of uh, PB Blaster and a cloth and wiped them down. Uh, the worst thing that this lathe has, it just has some, some like uh, varnishing on it. So um, I think it'll be a great restoration project at some point. Uh, here is the, the tool holder. And I do have a Shars uh, AXA tool post for it. Um, I'm debating whether I just want to clean this up and put it back on, or I might uh, try to clean it up and, and go ahead and put a, uh, a coat of paint on there, just just to, to test what kind of finish I could get. I'm not really sure. No rush. Uh, and I just put the three jaw chuck on, so I could kind of start roughing this. 
and once I get uh, once I get it cut I'll probably go ahead and uh, switch over to collets and I'll, I'll, I'll make a little video of that as I'm making this part um, back to this headstock though I'm gonna bring you over to the other lathe real fast so you can kind of see the difference as to uh, uh, how, how easily the other lathe shifts okay so hang on here we go okay so here we are at the other uh, Delta 11 inch another nice lathe uh, weighs are in pretty good condition um, I'm just a little uh, leery on keeping too many lathes I still have the two south bends and I don't know how many lathes I really need so but here you can see this one it just shifts I could probably just go ahead with one finger and turn that so I'm not really sure what's going on with the other lathe but we're gonna have to get in there and uh, start ripping it apart at some point I mean at, at this moment it's usable uh, I just can't thread with it but um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really nice little sweet machine there. I think it's going to um, work out very well when it's done. It is variable speed. Uh, so that's a pretty neat feature. And I think it could do a lot of the smaller parts where, as I'll keep the South Bend 13s for, uh, for the larger stuff. Okay, guys. Um, thanks for watching. Subscribe. I'll be doing more of these videos as I go through my machines. It's, uh, it's taken an awful lot of time just, uh, just puttering around here by myself, so uh, I don't know how long this is going to take. I still have the Bridgeport project. I still want to rip this apart, clean it real good. This is in, uh, this, this, uh, is in very good shape. Uh, it looks a little beat at first glance, but it's got the chrome ways. Uh, the ways are in perfect condition. Uh, the bed, the bed has a lot, or the table has a lot of drill marks on it. Uh, prob probably some kid was uh, messing around with it, but it's really no worse for wear. Uh, other than the table being a little messed up, uh, I think I could get some good accurate cutting with it, and uh, I'll be bringing that out in another video once I get the lathes at least in in place. Okay, guys, uh, have a good holiday, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and. I'll see you again soon. Take care.